Okay, here we will talk about least square approximation using the singular value decomposition. So I recall that the singular value decomposition is when you write a matrix A as a product of three matrices U, sigma and V transpose, where U and V are orthogonal. Okay, uh, and we can use the singular value decomposition to solve um, least square problems. Okay, um, so basically a least square problem is uh, the following. You have some set of data B and, and uh, uh, you have to find some set of data C. Uh, but basically you will never get exactly the same set of data when you choose something for C and you apply it to the matrix A. You will never get zero, you will always get some remainder R. And the goal is to make that remainder the smallest possible. So the length has to be minimal. Uh, and we can use least square for that. Okay. Um, so basically uh, if we rewrite that equation, but we sub substitute for a, uh, so let's rewrite it. We want that the error uh, is minimal. Now, if we substitute for a, we get u sigma v transpose. times C minus B um, the smallest possible. Now we can factor out a U here and here we can add a U transpose. Why? Because um, uh, u is orthogonal, so u times u transpose will get the identity matrix and so uh, it will disappear and we will get our b back, okay? Um, now we can set u transpose b equal to some vector d uh, and d itself is equal to d0 and d1 so basically, uh, D0 contains rows with at least one non-zero element, okay? And D1 is the, the other part, okay? Um, so if we rewrite that. Uh, also, uh, sorry, I forgot. Uh, recall that the, the unorthogonal matrix like u here doesn't change the length. Uh, it doesn't change the norm of a vector, okay? So we can do as if it wasn't here, okay? Recall, u is orthogonal, so it doesn't change length, uh, but here we want the minimal length. But given that u doesn't change the length, we can ignore it. So we can just rewrite that as sigma v transpose c minus um, u transpose b, but we said that u transpose b is equal to d, okay? Uh, and now, so the vector d contains contains rows that have only zero elements and some that doesn't have that. Uh, so uh, we can separate that vector uh, d. Um, um so uh here right a hat I will explain that really soon. Here instead of t I will write d zero then we will add um d one which are the rows that have zero elements. Okay, so it doesn't really change something. Um that s hat basically uh, is uh, when you have your uh, matrix sigma, you have your checkernal elements, and then you have rows 
and columns with only zeros. Okay, like for the vector d. Uh, and s hat is basically when you remove some of these rows or columns, you don't necessarily have to remove them all, uh, but you can remove some of them. Um, okay, the goal is then that you can still multiply with uh, with uh, um, the matrices uh, V and U. Okay. Okay. Um, so basically, um, the most accurate set of data possible will be given by C equals the matrix V times S hat. So we remove some columns of our rows to have only zeros. Uh, the inverse of that, that's also called the pseudo inverse. Um, so basically the pseudo inverse is just uh, Remember that the matrix sigma contains the singular values in the diagonal. Here you will just have in the the same elements, but it will be one over sigma one until one over sigma n. Okay. Okay. Um, then times d zero. Okay. So the rows of d that have non-zero elements. Okay. Um, and uh, so remember that d0 is contained in the vector d and that d is equal to u transpose b okay um okay so once you you get your vector d uh, you will choose d0 uh, if you have some vector with four entries and the last one is zero. You will only consider the three first entries, and that will be um, d zero. Okay, d zero. That will be d one. But we uh, we won't be interested in d one. And so we will use, we'll use d zero and multiply it with uh, this pseudo inverse. Okay. Um and um, um we then we will have to multiply so let's just rewrite that C as V Sigma hat D zero. Then we will multiply that sigma with the matrix V. Um, and so, for example, what we can do is, um, let's say we our original sigma is a four by three matrix. Um, let's say it has two entries in the diagonal, uh, and the third element is zero. And um, so here you have a row with only zeros. Okay. Uh, then there are zeros everywhere else. Um, our goal, and let's say our matrix V is a 3 by 3 matrix. Okay. Uh, if we want to multiply sigma, even if it's the pseudo inverse, uh, it's the same matrix basically. You just uh, do 1 over sigma for the pseudo inverse. If you want to multiply it with um, with uh, our matrix V, we will have to remove the fourth row. And it doesn't really matter because, as I said, um, there are only zeros in this row. So in this case, our pseudo inverse, so you will have uh, 1 over the first singular value, 1 over the second, so it's really badly written. Um, One over first, one over the second, 
and here we have zero. So we will be able to multiply uh, the pseudo inverse with v. Okay. So that's the goal of this uh, s hat. Okay. You remove some rows that have only zeros. Okay. And uh, so c will be your our most accurate set of data. Okay. And these here also these are the rows that have only um, non-zero elements. Okay. And it's like that that we proceed. I will do an example in the next video.